Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast for Contractors. Get actionable advice and tactics on how to grow your home service company. Plus interviews with industry experts dropping value bombs in marketing, sales, and operations. And now, let's power up your home service biz with your host, Mark Ambrose of Battle Plan Marketing. All right. Hello, home service pros. Welcome to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast, episode number 107. Today, we're going to talk about four powerful links that can help power up the ranking ability of your website. And at the end, we'll give you a bonus tip that is sure to add ranking power to your website as well. So when your website ranks better for searches that are related to your services, then your company is being seen by more people, which in turn should generate more traffic to your website, which in turn should generate more leads to your business. That's the primary purpose of your website, to rank well for your services in your service areas, to attract traffic and convert that traffic into leads and booked appointments, right? So the most beautiful website in the world is totally worthless if it doesn't rank well to generate traffic and again convert that traffic into leads. Ultimately, there are three essential requirements to get your website ranking well. The first is technical SEO or search engine optimization that is fully optimized. This is about auditing your website regularly and cleaning up the technical foundation of your, your website. You should do this about every three months, especially if you're adding a lot of content to your site over time. Things get missed, and you need to stay on top of it. So the technical portion of your website search engine optimization is your directory structure or your URL structure, your topical structure, and internal linking crawl errors, page URLs, your titles, your meta descriptions, alt tags for images, making sure the pages are being indexed by Google. If you have orphan pages that are sitting alone, not being linked to, canonicalization, which could also be, if not used, potentially, and in a lot of cases, you'll have content cannibalization, too many articles about a similar topic. Google doesn't know which to rank. So you can use a canonical which says, hey, Google, use these pages, right? You should also consolidate those pages together. Sitemaps, schema markup, Google Search Console connection, of course, mobile friendliness, how fast the site loads, suspicious bank links, whether or not you're using Bing Webmaster Tools, on and on and on. Those are the technical portions, SEO portions of your website. They need to be polished up and all errors removed, right? Once you have that solid technical foundation, then the second essential requirement is to begin building its ranking ability and strength, right? And you do that through two avenues. A is creating content. So that's the second part of powering up your site. So search engine optimized content that's researched by topic, right? And it's built in topical groupings and intelligently linked internally to and from related topical content, right? So you have to create these, people call them silos or clusters or groupings, however you want to, you know, label it. Basically, it's a group of pages that are about a related topic, but those pages are about subtopics, right? So again, we're not cannibalizing the same content topic. We're taking a topic that has multiple subtopics, and we're writing articles about each of those subtopics and interlinking all those pages together, right? So content is uh, king, as they say out there, right? This needs to be well-researched, well-written, and designed content, you know, that is proven to be informative and helpful to your visitors, not just content for content sites right? But content that people actually have already shown through research, SEO research, keyword research, already shown that they want to consume and are consuming it, right? And that it's created, your content is created to be the best it can be and more useful to those who are consuming it, right? 
So the objective is to be more useful than the top ranking content about that topic, right? It also has to be content that other websites will deem worthy of linking to and recommending to their visitors, right? Which leads us to the third requirement for your website to rank well and generate more traffic and leads, and that's building links from other websites to yours. So Google and other search engines use links as a primary ranking factor, really number one ranking factor, because they look at links as votes of trust from other websites to yours that your site and your content is worthy of linking to, right? Now this, the link building world has been abused for decades, right? So Google's algorithm changes are continuously looking to filter out bogus links or links from crappy sites to yours. So it's not, it used to be the quantity of links, no longer. Now it's the quantity and quality. We're, we should reverse that, the quality and the quantity, right? So links that will move the needle for your website are links from reputable websites in your industry, links from reputable websites in your location or service area, links from reputable media websites. And then lastly, not as important, but still important for brand signals is links from the top four data aggregators and branded social media channels, right? So again, these are important for brand signals to the search engines. They are not going to move the needle alone for you as much as the, the previous three can but they are still required. Again, name, address, phone, and brand signals, right? Now, link building by itself is an art and science all of its own and probably the most difficult part of search engine optimization because it takes outreach in a lot of cases. And so there's a lot of manual labor involved in growing links. Or can be. You could do it organically and just let them happen organically, like Google would like you to do. But that's a very slow road to ranking. So today we're going to share four important and powerful links you can and should be building. But you can go much further on this topic to discover how to add serious ranking power to your website and its lead generation capability. Okay? So, number one, as promised. For links related to your industry, you should join your state trade association for your industry. This sends a clear ranking signal to Google that your business is tied to that industry and that you are taking it serious enough to join your state trade association. All right? will separate you from a lot of wannabes in your industry. So here in California, I'll give you a few. For plumbers, it's the California Plumbing and Mechanical Contractors Association, cpmca.org. For solar installers, CalSIA, the California Solar Energy Industries Association, calcalsea.org, CalSIA. For electricians, California. The Western Electrical Contractors Association, gowca.org. And lastly, for roofers, the Roofing Contractors Association of California, racil.org. For your local state, for your industry, just search your trade, your state trade association. So, Roofers, Minnesota Trade Association or Minnesota Trade Association for Roofers, something like that, right? And you'll find it in the organic search results. Find your state trade association for your trade and join. Uh, but before you join, be sure that they have an online directory on their website of all their members where your company will get a listing along with a link to your website, right? Now, there are many other reasons for joining your state trade association. Right now, we're talking about building links. So you're only interested if they have, and most of them do, a member directory, again, with a link from their, their website to yours. Now, 
Other benefits would include, you know, business training in your industry, trade shows and educational conventions. You learn about the latest equipment in your industry, the latest training, latest certifications, and of course, trade associations lobby your state and federal government on behalf of your industry. So you're promoting the lobbying power as well of your industry. Okay, number two, for additional links to help further establish your industry connection, try to solicit links from industry suppliers. So we're on industry, you got trade association, now let's shift to suppliers. So ask your suppliers what it would take to get listed as a dealer of their equipment in your local area. So do they have a trade membership directory? Not a membership directory, but a directory of skilled trade companies by state or in, if it's a local supplier, then that makes it easier, just locally, right? Suggest a link exchange. You link to them, they'll link to you. Or maybe in a review exchange, you can review one of the pieces of equipment or tools you get from them and provide a link and, and you post that on your site and provide a link from your site to theirs and ask them to do the same thing, right? This will work better with smaller suppliers and more difficult with bigger national suppliers, right? But hopefully you have some smaller suppliers you can approach with this. Now, Google does allow for link exchanges. I'll link to you, you link to me, as long as they are not, quote, excessive part, unquote, end quote, of your overall link profile, right? Uh, which you can get in Google's developer's website. So that's their language, right? Not excessive. So a little bit locally and within your industry will be just fine. Now, these direct industry links help Googlebot and others further identify you as a trusted source in your industry, right? Now let's move on to your location. So number three is for links related to your location and your service area, you join your local chamber of commerce in the city that you're located in or in the city where that's in your service area that may be bigger and have a bigger chamber of commerce or where you do most of your work potentially or you get most of your clients from. So again, uh, make sure you'll get listed as a member on their website with a link back to your website. That's what these listings and links are what it's all about, right? Getting that link. Other member benefits include chamber member meetings where you can network with other local business leaders, most of whom have buildings and need trade services, right? So it's a great networking opportunity as well. 3B for links related to establishing links local to your location are link exchanges with other local businesses. They don't have to be in your industry. They just need to be in your location, right? Your service area. And again, you can achieve this through exchanging links with local businesses that maybe you know. You know other business leaders in your area, business owners? Talk to them about exchanging links. Maybe they know, maybe they don't. That, the, that links are the number one power ranking factor for your website ranking. So links from you to them help them. Links from them to you help you, right? So again, you can achieve it through exchanging links. You can also achieve or help establish your location through participating or hosting in local events that will be, that are announced online. They have a page online with links going out to local sponsors, local participants, etc., right? Same for donating to local causes, right? Or sponsoring local organizations or teams or maybe internships, right? Also writing articles for popular local blogs. So other blogs in your location and or your service area that are super popular, right? And if so, you should be looking into writing an article for that blog. Most of them, or many of them, will want or solicit articles from outside sources. 
So being a local business is appealing to the local blog. So how about writing an article for them that's helpful to their readership, not just a promotional article. We're talking about something that's helpful. Hints, tips, whatever have you, for local homeowners, right? The fourth powerful link you can build to establish ranking power for your site is from powerful media websites, right? And the best way to do that is through press releases. So right? you try to use a press release once every quarter or more, if possible. Be newsworthy, right? Create announcements and short press releases. These only have to be like 500 words or less. And you create announcements for new products, new services, new hires, maybe milestones in your business, the number of years you're in business, big anniversary, your 10th anniversary, your 20th anniversary, 30th, whatever it may be. Maybe it's your first or second. So number of years in business, maybe you achieved your 100th customer review, five-star review. Maybe it's uh, new hires, right? Number of employees, you've hit your 10th employee, your 50th, your 100th employee. Maybe it's the number of customers. You hit your 1,000th customer or so on and so forth, right? Maybe it's new client wins for big projects. So are you doing some commercial business and did you land a big job? Announce that in a press release, right? Maybe you're soon to be exhibiting at a trade show for those same very state trade associations, right? Or at a local show, right? So announce that in a press release that you'd be exhibiting there. And again, an energy press release, of course, would be your contact info, your business name, address, phone number, and your website address, which becomes a link to your website, of course. You can also put a link, by the way, to your Google business profile website. And that'll help. So you should both, usually in a press release, you can put in several links, two or more links. So one for sure should be to your homepage. Or if you're writing about a particular subject and you have a topical page on your site about that, you should link to that page. Let's say solar batteries. You can write an article about that and link to your own page on your site about solar batteries or water heaters, whatever it might be about. All right. So look at announcements for that. Same for you can earn links by partnering or sponsoring with a local charity or local organization, or maybe you've earned industry awards or certifications to create press releases about all of these things, right? Super powerful. And it'll be picked up usually by a hundred or more media websites. Once you run that press release, uh, we use Newswire to do that one of the more expensive, but also have one of the broadest array of media sites and more powerful websites that will pick it up, that are in their network, right, that they send it out to. So it'll go out to hundreds and hundreds of news sites, and maybe one or two or 300 of them will pick it up. And that becomes one, two, 300 links. And maybe out of all of those, there might be one or two dozen or even less Uh, super powerful media websites there, right? So if you get links from them, if it's a good article, good announcement, it may get picked up by some of the bigger players in the media world. All right, and now a bonus link building tip to get some more powerful links from other sites to yours is to be a guest on a local or industry podcast, just like here, right? So get your message out and simultaneously earn a valuable link from their podcast to your website. Now, usually podcasts, if they have a guest on, when they publish that podcast in the podcast show notes or the description, however you want to define that, they will hopefully put a link to your website. So, you know, so-and-so is a guest on our show today, and here's a link to their website. Now, that link is going on all the podcast platforms, right? Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all endless, right? So you're getting, even if there are no follow links, we're not going to get into do follow and low follow links today. Links are great, whether they're follow or, or not follow. Do follow or not follow, right? So sorry I even brought that up. Forget about that. <laughs> 
building links is powerful no matter how they get labeled. All right. Especially again, if they're local, they're in your industry, or they're coming from powerful media sites. And so these podcasts are an excellent way to A, get your message out. B, let local people hear your voice, get used to your personality, get to know you a little bit, or they think they will. And it helps solidify you and let you stand out from your competitors locally. So being on local podcasts should be at the top of your link building and your brand building strategies, right? All right, if you follow up with those four and the bonus link building tactics, I guarantee they will power up your website, help it rank better, grow more traffic, and then if it's designed well, you'll convert that traffic into more leads and ultimately more bookings on your calendar and sales in your ledger, right? For even more ideas and details, go back to our episode number 45 which is all about some specifics and more details about building local links. They're a super powerful tool for powering up your website. All right. I hope that helps some of you. Thanks for sharing your time and attention with us today. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button, help the algorithm like us. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, so you know when we post a future episode, feel free to share this one on your social channels. Good luck out there and create a great day. Thanks for listening to the Battle Plan Marketing Podcast. To power up your home service business, for show notes, visit battleplanmarketing slash podcast. If you enjoyed our show, please share it on social. Until next time.